Hello and welcome to Faithfully Stampin' with Jennifer Helm. I am the Faithful Stamper, Jennifer Helm Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today I'm going to teach you how to make this simple card with an angular design to the front. I don't know that there's a formal technique name for this. I saw this card and thought it was interesting and thought that I could make it, but I figured I would probably waste a lot of cardstock and designer series paper trying. So I learned the right way to do it and I want to teach you that technique right now. To start, you will need a piece of cardstock that is eight inches wide by five and a half inches tall. So just slightly smaller than your typical card front. On the eight inch side, I scored it down the middle at four inches. And I'm going to fold on that score line. So this is my card front. Next, I'm going to need a piece of copy paper that is roughly the same size as my card front. I'm using a piece that is four by five and a half, and this is going to be a template that I'm going to use to make my card. And to make the template, you're going to need a pencil as well. I'm going to take this piece of copy paper and match it up to the top right corner of the card and then I'm looking for to make this angle here. So make sure you leave enough room at the bottom of your card for your sentiment. So just keep that top corner matched up on your copy paper and maneuver it around until you're happy with the angle. And when you're happy with the angle and you've left yourself enough room for your sentiment, hold your cardstock down and your copy paper and just take your pencil and you'll be able to feel the line at, along the top of the card and just make a straight line along the top and then a line down the side as well. They don't have to be perfectly straight, you'll fix that in a minute with your trimmer. And then before I forget what I was doing, I like to just put a couple little arrows here and that way I remember where my template needs to be positioned. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my paper trimmer and bring it over and cut on my pencil lines. Now to do this, I'm matching up my pencil line with the score track on my trimmer. And I can double check that my lines are straight because I should be able to see my pencil line here in the track itself and then the second line is much easier to cut because I've got a straight angle to work with at the top but again just repeat and it's okay if you if your pencil lines are showing this isn't just your template it doesn't have to be perfect and now I'm ready to start building the pieces I need for my card I have a piece of designer series paper that is four inches wide. If you feel a little better, you can go to four and a half, uh, four and a quarter by five. That's not as big as the card front because when I angle the paper, I'm not making it the full length of the card front. Hopefully that makes sense. And I kind of go old school here, but I like to match my template to my cardstock for my designer series paper. And I match up this top corner again. So I might have a little overhang along the side, that's okay. And I take paper clips. If you're handier than I am and can hold your template on and cut at the same time and hold it still, go for it. But I like to anchor my template a little bit. And for this, I'm going to use my scissors and just trim along the edges. You could use your paper trimmer as well. So a couple of quick cuts here. And then I will have my template and the panel I need for the front of the card. This is the longest step right there. 
and then take your paper clips off and you can put your template away and you can save it for use on other cards. You only need to cut one template and then you can use it for multiple cards. The next thing I need is a piece of cardstock in a coordinating color. I am using Flirty Flamingo and Melon Mambo to go with my piece of designer series paper. And this piece of colored cardstock is, I'm sorry, this one is four by four and three quarters. And so this part is pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and glue this panel right on the top. And I like to make sure I get glue on all my corners since it's got a couple more angles and they're not perfectly straight angles. I just like to make sure this panel isn't going anywhere. And again, I just line up. I like to line up this point here because I like that point at the top. But this should match up evenly because they are the same width. And just press that down. Now I want to cut along here and give this just a little bit of a border for accent. I could use my trimmer but again I'm a little bit old school so I'm going to take a ruler and just draw a pencil line where I want to cut one my panel. And you don't want much more than a quarter of an inch. If you want to go smaller, do about an eighth and just gently draw the line so that you're not moving your ruler. And then again on this other side, I try to judge it about the same. And now I'm going to bring my trimmer back over and cut on those pencil lines just like I did when I was cutting my template. And I try to cut just to the inside of them, but it's okay if I have a little bit of a pencil line showing because I keep an eraser handy. And I'll just go over the edges to make sure none of that pesky pencil line shows up on my card front. Next, I'm gonna bring my card front back over and I wanna stamp my sentiment on the front before I glue this panel down. That way, if I make a mistake, it's okay and I haven't ruined the whole card. And what I like to do to save myself a little hassle is I flip open my card front so that I just have one less thing to hold down. I'm using Melon Mambo ink and you can either use a narrow sentiment here along the bottom or if you have something tall that's not very wide, you could fit it here as well. Once you have your template cut, you can kind of judge what size stamp you can use. And so this says, wishing you the very best. And that came out okay. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp my insert while I have my ink pad open. This is a piece of Whisper White cardstock that is three and three quarter inches. One important thing to remember is we cut half an inch off that card when we started, so it was only eight inches wide and then four when you fold it. So if you try to use a regular insert, it's going to be too wide. Ask me how I know. So, first thing, I have a strip of cardstock, the coordinating color that is three quarters of an inch wide by five and a quarter inches long and then a piece of designer series paper that is half an inch. And I'm going to layer these two together. And this is just going to add a fun little insert to my card, a little accent. So I'm gonna line that up. And then what I'm going to do is bring over my stamp and pierce mat again because this is a photopolymer set, so I need the extra little cushion underneath. And I'm just going to kind of hold this in place. I'm not gonna glue it quite yet, because I wanna make sure I don't mess up the inside sentiment. So I can just hold that, get an idea of where I want to stamp my sentiment for the inside of my card. And now, I can go ahead and glue this together. 
just saves me having to redo the whole thing in case I make a mistake. And again, I'm just gonna layer this right down the side. And then this piece can go right inside my card front. And I'm almost finished. I just have a little bit of accent work to do on the front of the card. And once you have your template cut and get a feel for the card, you can make a lot of these very quickly. One quick thing I'm going to do before I attach this to the card, I like the look of it, but I just wanted to give it a little something extra. So I'm going to stamp directly on my designer series paper, but if you have a darker print or a busier print, you won't need to do this step. But I just want to give it a little accent, so I have a sand dollar stamp from the stamp set I'm using, which I haven't showed you yet, but it is our beautiful Friends Are Like She Shells stamp set. It's photopolymer, has lots of good verbiage, and beautiful images of seashells. So if you've got a beach lover, this is the set for you. So now that I've got my sand dollar stamped there, I am going to go ahead and glue this to the card front. Again, I'm watching my angles to make sure that I've got them all covered. And I'm just going to line this up with the top corner and seam. And it should line up perfectly. There we go. Now, this is perfectly lovely, but I want to give it just another accent. I have a starfish that I stamped on another piece of designer series paper. I could have stamped it on a piece of white, but I didn't want that stark white to show. I wanted to kind of go with the muted colors here. So I'm just going to take this little scrap of designer series paper that I stamped and then fussy cut. And I'm going to put two little dimensionals on the back and add a little starfish to my card. And for one finishing touch, I'm going to take our beautiful opal rounds and add a few of those to the card. And I like to add these in threes. And there I have a perfectly lovely card that once I got the template cut didn't take me any time at all to finish. And a quick stamp as well on my envelope and I am ready to go. And I have some samples to show you. I'm trying to make a Christmas card every week to help bolster my stash for the holidays. So this is the same technique with a poinsettia popped on the front and again, the strips on the inside. Next, I decided to let the designer series paper do the talking on this card. Since it was a busier print, I obviously didn't need to stamp on it. I used the same paper for my envelope flap. And I just stamped a sentiment here at the bottom. This one was more vertical. And I did not include the Whisper White panel on the inside since this was such a light color. I just stamped directly in the card and I used the same technique with the strips here but I extended them by a quarter of an inch. So they're five and a half by half an inch or three quarters of an inch. And then one final one in this look. This was the first card I actually made in this technique and I used the Whisper White. So again, I didn't need to add that extra panel inside. But I used a six by six piece of paper for this card. And as you can see from this piece, when you use your template, you've got quite a bit of the six by six panel left. So the first thing I did was I cut my, my half inch strip from the six by six to use on the inside of the card. But then I thought to myself, there has to be something I can do with this. So I basically reversed the template and I made this card. So I cut down the scrap of six by six so it was four inches wide. And then I used the template to help me determine how big of a piece I needed. And then I just trimmed it accordingly and I popped this up with dimensionals. So you can see you can get two similar yet different looks 
and waste less paper. So I hope you've enjoyed learning this angular technique. I hope you'll visit my website if you need any stampin' supplies, and I'd love for you to pop over to Facebook and visit the Faithful Stamper. All the measurements for this project are listed in a Facebook post there. Happy crafting, everyone!